Am I the a-hole for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent if he moves in with me? This is a doozy. I've been dating Josh for a year. I should say now that I 24 female don't ever want to be legally married and Josh 30 male is divorced and doesn't want to remarry. We also live in a place where there is no common law marriage. Still, we want to take things a bit further and we're talking about Josh and his two daughters moving in with me. I own a three-bed, two-bath house in a nice area. Josh rents a two-bed, one-bath apartment and his lease is coming up. My mortgage is 1k a month and Josh's rent is 1400 a month. It was important to me that we would have everything figured out before making the change so that there would be no surprises or disagreements about who pays what. I figured it would be unreasonable for Josh to expect to just live with me for free, especially since I'd be giving up one of my rooms so his daughters could have a room. So, I suggested that Josh pay $700 a month to me in rent, half of what he is currently paying. I would cover the cost of any home repairs, internet, garbage, etc. Then, we would split utilities. Even though there's three of them and one of me, I don't mind splitting since that would be about what I'm currently paying, I predict. And since I meal prep once a week, I would just get my own groceries and he could get theirs. When I laid everything out, Josh was very unhappy and said since it's my house, he shouldn't have to pay rent and that we should split groceries. I told him he was welcome to buy his own house and I would move in with him and happily pay rent while renting out my own house. He was mad at me because he said he's not in a position where he can buy a house. We can't come to an agreement, so I suggested he just find another apartment as the owners aren't letting him renew and we could revisit the topic in a year. He's not happy with that either because rent prices have skyrocketed here and two bedrooms now go for around $1,800 a month and he thinks he won't be able to find a place he can afford. I'm a bit frustrated because I feel like $700 a month is a really good deal compared to the likely $1,800 he will have to pay. Since we aren't going to get married or anything, I don't understand why he thinks I would be okay with him living for free with his two kids. I'm happy to have romance and companionship, but shared assets and finances are not something I want in life. I don't want to support a man. Am I the a-hole for expecting my boyfriend to pay rent? Now for the top comments before reading the mini update. Not the a-hole. Your solution is perfectly reasonable. If he doesn't like your rental price, he is free to find his own home. Unless he has just been dating you so he could eventually move in and his daughter is in and pay no rent. See, that's something I'm really worried about. I work with a lot of successful women and I've seen a lot of them broke dirtbag guys who just mooch off them. I like Josh and we have a good time when we're together and the intimacy is great. But I don't think that is good enough for $700 a month if you know what I mean. Moving in with you would save him a significant amount of money. He should be grateful for that offer. Him being upset and wanting to pay nothing is a huge red flag. Trust your gut, OP. It doesn't sound like it's going to get better with this guy. Not the a-hole. You're about to be taken for a ride if you give in and let him move in without paying rent. My advice, from all my years, as someone who also doesn't want to get remarried, maintain separate homes. You lose out if you let him move in. That's what I'm thinking. I'm already a bit apprehensive because his kids are a bit wild. But he isn't happy with living separately because he's going to have to pay a really high rent. But I think I'll probably just tell him to either agree to my terms or get over it. I don't know. Him wanting to save money is not a good enough reason to live together. Plus, the fact that you and him are already having issues that you're struggling to come to an agreement is probably a sign that you guys aren't compatible to live together. Not the a-hole. And listen to your gut. Well, this is the only real disagreement we've had in the last year. I'm trying to be optimistic and think that maybe he just needed an outside perspective. Now for the mini update. So I showed Josh this post and he thinks you all are wrong. So here's some input from him. Leslie makes 120k a year and I make 30k. I'm living paycheck to paycheck supporting two kids with no help from my ex-wife. It's gotten so expensive here that at this rate, I'm not even going to be able to feed my kids soon without going to the food bank. No matter what, they're going to get fed. But it's not fair that she owns a house and can go on vacations or spend $400 a month getting her hair done when I can't even buy my kids name brand cereal. 
She shouldn't charge me to live with her because she should understand that I want to be able to spend whatever I can giving my kids the childhood that they deserve. Not for me, but for them. So thanks Reddit. Oh, you won, and I'm glad I posted here. After a very loud and angry argument with Josh, I broke up with him. Despite pretty much everyone telling him he was wrong, Josh insisted that I should basically support the three of them because it's what would be best for his kids. He doesn't seem to understand that they aren't my kids and no one is going to want to bankroll the three of them, at least no one with a brain. The point is, I'm young, good-looking, and I own a house. I can do better than a broke single dad who has no education and a crappy job, who thinks it's okay to mooch off me and scream in my face when I tell him no. Hope your next girlfriend is stupid enough to put up with you, Josh. No wonder your ex-wife left. Next story. Am I the a-hole for counting down the days until my daughter turns 18 so I can stop being legally responsible for her? I married my wife about two years ago and she has a daughter from a previous relationship. Early on during our dating period, she made it clear that her daughter has a father and she's not looking for another father for her. The ground rules were set by her, which is that I will be an adult figure but not a parental one. I will have no say in how she is to be brought up, and I can't punish her in any way. Considering she was 14 when her mom and I met and 15 when we married, I agreed to her rules. My thinking is that she's already too old for me to make any difference in her life anyway, so I make it an issue. Fast forward a couple of years and my life has been a nightmare. The girl constantly gets into trouble and has been kicked out of several schools. She lived with her father at a time. She had to move in with us so she could attend a new high school in order to graduate. She's been suspended several times at this high school, but it looks like she'll graduate on time. While living with us, she's gotten into two car accidents. One was when she was drunk and we had to remortgage our house to pay her attorney fees and legal bills. The judge dressed us down in court for not being better parents. I'm not a legal expert at all, but for movies and shows, I know that judges can jail you for arguing, so I bit my tongue and took it. It was humiliating. The girl is a couple of months away from being an adult, and this weekend, I was out with the guys and she came up in conversation. I complained about how much money I've spent bailing her out of trouble, and that I can't wait until she turns 18 so she can face her own consequences. Word got back to my wife and she blew her top. I still don't think I said anything wrong, but I'm staying at a motel tonight. I want to be clear, we're not kicking her out, and considering she doesn't work, she'll be living with us for a while. I'm just waiting for the day she's an adult so I won't be yelled at by any more judges. If you're not a parental figure, why are you paying for these things at all? You're a saint for putting up with this. Not a-hole. Mom wants to have her cake and eat it too. Actually, mom wants to be a terrible mother and wanted to ruin any possible relationship her daughter and her husband could have had. She is the problem, not the daughter. Dude, why are you so worried about being jailed? Trust me, you are already in a prison of your own making, not the a-hole. I'm not sure that's fair, unless there were a ton of warning signs that he's not mentioning. How was he supposed to know when the girl was 14 that she would end up being so terribly behaved? because you should date someone for more than a year before getting married, especially when a kid is involved. Not a whole, but you should probably be rethinking your whole marriage, because this is not going to stop when she turns 18. Yeah, but at 18, she's a legal adult and he can wash his hands off her. His daughter will have to clean up her own messes. He's not legally bound to pay for anything related to the law or damages she may do. No, but his wife is still there and clearly doesn't like that stance. It's not going to be as clear-cut as 18 and cutting the cord. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my in-laws to come on vacation with me? I have been with my partner for four years. He has two kids with his ex-wife, while I have none and don't plan to. Our household income is okay and he earns the majority of it. He earns 65% of the total income. The last four years, he has insisted that we pay 50-15 to household bills, despite the fact he earns far more than what I earn and his kids stay with us regularly. I pay half the rent, bills and grocery, which is expensive for someone on my salary. Then he wants to buy a house near his ex-wife so it can be closer to his kids, 
so he says it's important that I pick up 50% of the costs now, so that allows him to save more of his money for our future. The money he isn't paying into bills, but goes straight into his own savings account, not a joint one. He does not really acknowledge he has underpaid bills the last four years. I've calculated his underpaid between 16,000 to 19,000 pounds. When he first moved in, without his kids, I picked up all the bills. I paid out over 8,000 pounds in rent and bills, while I paid around 1,100 pounds towards food. Not long ago, he asked if I wanted to go away for the following weekend. I said sure, and we talked about where we could go. He then went to visit his parents and later that evening he messaged me an Airbnb link for a lodge by the beach to visit that weekend. He asked if his family could come, and he said he'd pay more than 50% if I agreed to them coming. I don't have any family, plus his mom and dad have beat cancer recently so I said yes to his folks and grown-up brother coming, and booked and paid for the Airbnb. A few days ago, he wanted to settle the vacation bill and has offered to pay 60% of the total. I've kicked off stating the obvious, there were 7 people in that lodge, and 6 of them were his family, so my portion of that bill should be 15%. Am I wrong? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole, but why are you with this guy? It sounds like you were funding so much of his life and not getting anything out of this relationship other than being so financially weakened, it would be hard for you to leave. Because being alone is lonely. That's what most of these posts boil down to. Am I the a-hole for finally not putting up with this crappy person? OP, ask yourself this question. If the situation were reversed and you made more money than your partner, would you make the same demands that you are letting him make from you? So why are you allowing him to make you struggle and sacrifice, when you would never expect the same if the situation were reversed? To answer the post, not the a-hole and he is 100% the a-hole, because his family may not know what you make, but he does. And he clearly doesn't respect you nor your financial situation in the slightest. Don't accept treatment that you would never expect of others. You deserve an equal partnership with deep respect. You realize he's not going to put your name on that house, right? If that house was really for your future, he would set up a savings account with both of your names on it. He's just using you to pay enough bills that he can save enough for a house and, more than likely, dump you once he's purchased the house. Put your foot down, tell him the money distribution isn't fair, and you will only pay 35% of the bills, but offer to put that 50% you are saving toward a house and mutual savings account. And you want your name on the deed as 35% owner. Insist on getting a lawyer and having an agreement drafted. If he refuses, then you have your answer. He's just using you. Also, don't let him gaslight you or persuade you into seeing his side of things. Tell him this isn't anything personal, even if it is, it's just protecting yourself and your future. Again, if he declines or argues, dump him and move on. Last story. Am I the a-hole for letting my daughter share a room even though they don't need to anymore? And despite my ex asking me not to? My ex and I have two daughters who are 9 and 10. They are 20 months apart to be specific. They are as close as twins, and they look alike enough that they're mistaken for such sometimes. They get their weekends with me which until a couple months ago, they had to share a room because my apartment only had two bedrooms. Luckily, my financial situation has improved and I now have a small house with three bedrooms for them. The thing is, they didn't want to have their own rooms. They liked sharing because it's like sleepover every night and asked me if they could keep sharing. I figured I'd be an idiot if I didn't support my children getting along, so I agreed. The extra bedroom is just a guest room for now, but if slash when they change their mind, they can take it. Their mother is not happy about this. They never had to share a room over there, and apparently, they've been asking to. She's getting tired of that, and she asked me to split them up so they'd stop bothering her. I had a talk with them about not asking her anymore and how different houses have different rules, but I'm letting them keep sharing a room. Their mother thinks I'm encouraging codependency and that this isn't healthy, but I've seen no sign of that. They're in different grades and classes, have different friends, and do different activities and cope fine. They're perfectly healthy, happy kids, and I see no harm in what I'm doing, but she says I'm going to cause tension between her and them by letting them do something they can't over there. Not the a-hole. Your ex seems pretty controlling and doesn't want her daughters to be happier in your place. 
I don't see anything wrong with them sharing a room if they want to. They're little kids for Pete's sake. That's it, exactly. She doesn't want them getting excited about going to their father's. She sees what is coming and is afraid she will lose their love. And all she would have to do is let them share a room at her place, and the girls could be happy all the time. She is the one causing the rift. OP, you are not the a-hole. Your daughters are happy with the arrangement. It's not causing you any stress. And the only person with beef is someone who has no say over the rules in your house. There'll come a time where the girls may want their own rooms, but until then, there's nothing wrong with keeping things as they are. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. My 11 and 7-year-old girls shared a room until a year ago. I try not to let them sleep in each other's rooms on school nights, but most weekends, they spend at least one night in one another's rooms or beds. The amount they and yours are sharing is not harming them at all. Let them bond. Once they ask for the space and room, you have it. Good luck. Not the a-hole. When they're with you, it's entirely your decision. And sounds to me like you're making the right one. It's too bad mom isn't happy. But her goal is literally to make her kids less happy. So unless she's actually an expert on codependency, then her opinion here isn't worth more than what you think and what your kids want.